Dear Jennifer, dear Patrick, dear family and friends, I feel very much honored that Patrick thought of me to be his man of honor. My name is Stefan, and I was very close with Patrick in a time when he changed his life and finally met Jennifer. It is a great pleasure to be here with you. Guidebooks worldwide on Sweden recommend to talk about the weather as a starter in conversations. They say Swedes love that. This is not how I got to know Patrick. We met in a high-speed train from Cologne to Frankfurt Airport between Christmas and New Year. He was reading a book in Swedish, and that's why I decided to talk to him. I had already lived in Stockholm for six months by then, and I was wondering why I hadn't made any deeper acquaintance with the Swede so far. Maybe because I hadn't talked about the weather. I don't know. Anyways, there was a Swede and we started talk and we soon found out that we were also on the same flight back to Stockholm. Conversation went well. We had many common interests, real estate and looking at everything from a business perspective. Plus, I loved his humor and his presence. Arriving in Frankfurt, we already had taken the decision to sit next to each other on the plane to Stockholm and continued with our deep conversations. And we hadn't talked about the weather yet. At Stockholm airport, we were both expressing the wish to meet again and then said goodbye. The next weeks, I invited Patrick to join for all kinds of social events, but he was always busy. Spring arrived and we hadn't managed to meet. I became a little bit suspicious. Maybe I should have talked about the weather. <laughs> Summer started and then finally Patrick joined for watching a game of German football team during the European Soccer Championship. It took another three months for our third meeting, but from then on we met regularly and even flew to Iceland for a 10-day vacation the next summer. Patrick was a successful manager. Super positive thinking, competitive, very funny, and rooted in himself. Or, as our friend Michi said, coolest guy in Sweden. But somehow, he was not that happy at that time. Hard to say what caused it. He had gone through a divorce, he suffered from a disease, and he seemed to focus on work a lot. Patrick, Patrick wanted another life, and everybody who has ever met him knows that if Patrick wants to change something, he takes action. But looking through his business window, he didn't find the right solutions. The only thing I needed to do was to show him some new windows of opportunity and waiting for him to open his eyes. The main windows were traveling and socializing. I was super happy to find someone in my life who when he said, let's do it, he actually did it. And he likes to do things fast, sometimes a little faster than police allows. <laughs> and Patrick wanted to try all the things that are out there. It was beautiful on our trip to Iceland, how he really wanted to explore everything and enjoyed every moment of this trip. Kayaking in the open sea, going fishing for the first time and in four hours catching exactly one fish, horseback riding on the black beach, climbing mountains, visiting giant waterfalls. Priceless and pittoresque moments and a lot of fun. Besides all the fun, it feels so secure around Patrick. It is something that has always fascinated me about Patrick. He can switch at the right moment and suddenly becomes someone with whom one can have an in-depth conversation, who gives you valuable feedback and supports others with his combination of insightful thinking, clarity and caring attitude. Most of you have probably heard an advice from him starting with 
when I was at your age. <clears throat> and above all, despite all the coolness, he can show feelings, which makes him very human and complete. The other window that opened in Patrick's life was socializing. I just introduced him to meet up this platform. And it turned out that he had all he had already all the necessary skills to master socializing. With his humor, he can connect with people from whatever background. Generous as he is, he invited everybody on various occasions to his summer house in Aboga. I remember especially the crayfish parties, or maybe I don't remember them. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. If he gets going, he can entertain a whole party alone with this humor. So I didn't need to do much. Patrick changed his life by himself. I did not need to show him anything about women either. But it is a coincidence that he has picked a woman whose last name is Feenstra, which means window in Dutch. In 2014, Jennifer packed two suitcases and her dog Rascal and changed her life in New York for a life in Sweden. It was not the first step for her since she had already left her home in California to pursue a career as a scientist in New York. In California, she grew up in the countryside like Patrick, but more like in a Western movie, riding horses, living in a barn, and helping horses to give birth. There she was in Stockholm with her dog and needed to start a social life from the scratch. What a great luck that she was introduced to meet up and ended up with all these crazy people like us. <laughs> I remember her to be a bit shy in the beginning, but she soon grew into that group and became a frequent guest in our events. Unfortunately, my time in Sweden ended at this point, and I could only, from a distance, watch what they were doing. As Simone has already outlined in her speech, it was a bumpy ride in the beginning. But I could witness from the distance how the two grew together. First meeting with the parents in Patrick's country house. Patrick wrote on WhatsApp, nice but not so much talking. No English versus no Swedish. They were hosting a Santa Claus brunch for their common friends together for the first time. Patrick wrote, unfortunately, I missed it. I was outside while Santa Claus appeared. <laughs> and then going to California together to meet Jennifer's parents. Patrick wrote, everything is different bigger and more extreme, but I like it. <laughs> in March 2015, Patrick and me went for skiing in Austria, and it was the first time he spoke of a common future for him and Jennifer. Already a few weeks later, I heard about plans to propose in Copenhagen. Everything went fast, with a careful plan that was mutually discussed um, agreed among them. And sometimes you wonder how they take decisions, since both of them are used to take the decisions, although American style versus Swedish style. <laughs> Patrick guides discussions with a lot of questions to his preferred decision, while Jennifer says what to do or not. <laughs> I have noticed that they are both are willing to invest a lot of energy into mutual agreements and to make things work, which I think makes their relationship so successful. They are doing their thing. Although they are reading guidebooks about relationships and parenting, they are applying everything to their life. They are finding the Patrick and Jennifer, the Patrifa solution by combining the scientist and the manager's mind. This is the wonderful thing about this relationship and the reason why I believe 
that the two are perfectly made for each other. I'm so happy to be here in Stockholm today to help send them on with our blessings for this new part of their journey together. I think I can speak for everyone here in saying that we look forward to witnessing and being part of your new life, of lending a hand should you need it, or celebrating with you the good times in life. And I'm very happy to continue not to talk about the weather when we meet. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. And a toast. I have no beer. Yes, let's have a toast. A little bit shorter. Can everyone hear? Yes. Oh. No. <laughs> I think I'm loud enough anyway. Um, I'm not quite sure how to follow such a lovely speech, so I will probably keep it quite short and sweet. Um, I'm Jenny, for those of you that don't know, and I met Jennifer at a mama group in Stockholm uh, a few months after Austin and my son were born. And um, so from a beginning of, well, sleep deprivation and discussions of baby bodily fluids and, <laughs> and all that kind of interesting stuff. It's uh, developed into a truly treasured friendship. And I am delighted to be here uh, celebrating you and Patrick and very selfishly delighted that you're with Patrick so that you're staying in Sweden too. Yay. <laughs> um, so yes, <laughs> congratulations and lots of love to Jennifer and Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Vilken härlig dag och till och med härligt väder, vi som bor i Sverige. Fantastiskt och vilka härliga vänner. Det är många nya ansikten för mig men jag kommer gå igenom er allihop här och prata med er. Fantastiskt och jag tror vi går en underbar kväll till mötes. Men jag vill börja då och säga grattis än en gång och... Du, Jennifer, är varmt välkommen till vår familj. Hello, everybody. I think I met and talked to most of you. Uh, my name is Anna. I am Patrick's sister. And if you did not understand, this is Niklas, our big brother. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing to be here today. Uh, it's great to see. And I'm sure we'll have a wonderful evening here all together. And uh, want to again say, say congratulations. And for you, Jennifer, warmly welcome to our family. I know you are struggling a little bit with the Swedish language. And I am sure you are sometimes very frustrated with, with all the Swedish crazy people. <laughs> Uh, it's never easy to, to move to a different country, different culture. Uh, I think keep patient and, uh, you know, you're going to be fluent sooner than you know. Ja, och jag fortsätter här. Och uh, det jag och Anna uh, vill säga är att det är en fantastisk plattform du har byggt, Patrik. Den, uh, vi har ju hört en hel del om den uh, redan idag. Och jag tänkte ta några ord till. En plattform som kommer leda dig till ett lyckligt liv. Och den här plattformen har vi ju berört flera gånger idag här. Och det är ju naturligtvis din nyblivna fru Jennifer. Dina två små barn. Austin och Liam. Jag jämför. Jag har också två, tre barn till och med. Och ert, ert nya hus. Det är till och med designat av er själva. Fantastiskt. Och till och med fått igång ett företag. Och inte vilket företag som helst. Det är ett stabilt företag som ångar på. Hoppar förbi de första fem åren. Fantastiskt. Imponerande. Och med företagande så kommer ju frihet. Och stabilare ekonomi. 
Och det kanske är just stabilare ekonomi. Vi ser lite exempel på när vi ser hur ni dirigerar vilka presenter ni vill ha. Jag får faktiskt låna ett gammalt uttryck, Patrik, här. En, en bagare önskar ju sig inte fler limper. Patrick, it's great to see uh, the platform shaping up. We've heard a lot about it today. And um, it's something that gives you strength, power, energy, and above all makes you happy. So what is this platform? What does it consist of? Of course, Jennifer, who is now your wife, and uh, your small boys, Austin, and Liam, uh, the new house you've got in Åkersberga, which you designed, you built it on your own. It's exactly the way you want to have it. And you have a successful business, a company. And result-oriented entrepreneurship brings a stronger economy, and with that comes freedom in life. And um, I want to connect that to something you said a few years ago, I'm going to make the English version. <laughs> I think you all were very clear on we were not supposed to bring any presents here today, right? Clear instructions. And um, it's, it's a way of saying a little bit like we don't, we don't need it, so don't bring more bread to the baker. It's the English version. <laughs> Precis, och jag fortsätter väl lite på det här med, med företagande och det som kommer med det, med frihet och vad man kan göra och inte minst lite stabilare ekonomi som kommer med företagandet. Och då har jag ju hört att ni har provat det här med båtliv. Och det känner jag och min fru Angelica till. Vi har åkt båt här i, i, i tio år, lite till. Och provat det mesta. Och ni har ju gjort er entré här nu, har jag förstått. <laughs> och det, det är så, vi känner till det här mycket och det är, det är kostsamt att ha båt. Det är kostsamt att ha den i vattnet för det är hamnagifter, det är eh, bränsle och ja, det, det, det är hur dyrt som helst helt enkelt. Men att ha den på land det är heller inte billigt, för då ska man konservera och man ska ha eh, båtuppläggningsplatser och, och eh, det, det är också väldigt dyrt. Men dyrast utav allt, det är, och det har jag och Angelica också provat på, så jag ska vara ödmjuk, men det är när man inte bestämmer sig om man vill ha den på land eller i vattnet, utan man, man kör i vattnet men så plötsligt bestämmer man sig att vi ska vara på land istället. Och då tänker jag närmast på er grundstötning som ni gjorde här redan första veckan. Men det klarar man med. Det klarar man av. <laughs> okay, so we're going to stay a little bit with this economy, freedom um, that can open doors to a boating lifestyle. And it makes sense, you're living close by the sea. And uh, as we all know, boating is an expensive lifestyle. It's expensive when you have your boat in water. It's expensive when it's on land. But it's even more expensive when it's between land and water. And that's what we've heard. That's the scenario you experienced recently. The boat stranded. <laughs> and it's not the first time I've heard. So it's painfully, painfully expensive. So. Hopefully the last time. Ja, slutligen här då så vill jag återigen återkoppla till den här plattformen som vi inledde med och beskrev. Det, det är, det är, vi är fantastiskt imponerande och det var, det var, det var, man blev berörd när vi fick höra lite repetition här tidigare idag om vad du har varit med om Patrik. Det har varit en del utmaningar. Men det är fantastiskt hur du långsiktigt, tålmodigt har byggt upp det här igen. Så häftigt. Vi är väldigt imponerade, jag och min syster. 
Och det, det, är, det är så. Man får, det är svårt att få mycket gjort på ett år. Man, man överskattar vad man får gjort på ett år. Men de allra flesta underskattar vad man kan få gjort på tio år. Och det är, det är den här sekvensen som du har jobbat, Patrik. Och det är då man får gjort sådana här. Det är då man kan bygga upp sånt här. Otroligt imponerande. Så jag avrundar här genom att säga återigen stort grattis och lycka till i framtiden. Så so, Patrick, it's not uh, it's not it's been everything but easy. We've heard it uh, today. Um, tough times, difficult challenges. Um, and um, Niklas and I, we want you to know we are deeply impressed by your strive, your fighting spirit, your extreme discipline. And it kind of reminds you that in one year, uh, you can't make a lot of changes. You can't make a lot of things happen. But if you look 10 years, you have your goals, you have your targets, you measure, you progress, you're committed, dedicated, you can change, you can achieve a lot. And that's, that's what you've done. So that's, um, we're deeply Im impressed. And I um, uh, want to again say congratulations to both of you and um, wish you all the best in, in the future. And um, with that, we would like to propose a toast to the bride and the groom. Go, cheers. I'm Luke. I'm Jenny's Jennifer's favorite brother. <laughs> Just uh, so everybody's clear on that. Also, um, when it comes to our family. I'm the funny one in the family. And I know that because my family's been telling me that my entire life. I've, for example, um, whenever I tell my parents about my life's you know, goals and ambitions, they always tell me how funny I am. That's not true. <laughs> and, uh, I do have two sisters, and um, they're also telling me always like how funny I am. They're always telling me, "Oh, you you look so funny today. Are you today? You, you today you smell pretty funny." It's, uh, sounds. I I know I'm funny. It's cool. Um, so other than me, the, um, my mom, my dad, obviously Jennifer, my sister is here. No, I'm the funny one, but the rest of my family, are kind of, they're kind of boring. Um, my dad, uh, Larry Feenstra, the one that's laughing more than anyone else. <laughs> he's, uh, he's an engineer, and uh, he's a director of clinical engineering department in a hospital in California. He's uh, been there for like 40 years, super boring. <laughs> My, um, my mom, sitting next to my dad, is in the blue dress, and uh, she's retired, which is also super boring. <laughs> but even more boring than that, she owns an antique shop. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Antique Roadshow, but I normally put it on to fall asleep. And then, of course, there's my favorite sister. But I'd love for you guys to meet her, but she's not here today. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jackie couldn't make it. <laughs> but maybe I should be more specific. She's my favorite sister in, in, that lives in my time zone. <clears throat> um, but my sister Jennifer is my favorite sister that lives outside my time zone. 
Um, she's my younger sister, and she's always upstaged me my entire life, <laughs> which is really annoying. For example, um, when I was graduating with my two-year associate, I, I'm the older brother, by the way. When, when I was graduating with my two-year associate's degree from a community college, Jen was graduating California Polytechnic University with her four-year bachelor's degree, <laughs> which was really annoying. <laughs> then around the same time I was graduating from basic military training for the Air Force, Jennifer was graduating with her doctorate's degree in microbiology. <laughs> in fact, she even tutored me in math for the military entrance exams. <laughs> which I did very well on. Um, I don't have any children. <laughs> and I'm older. And uh, she's upstaged me again by having two gorgeous boys. Which is probably enough for both of us. And then uh, another example, when I was finally graduating with my own bachelor's degree from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Jennifer was becoming a published doctor. Um, uh, my sister is super amazing. Um, and she is a doctor, and Patrick, by the way, from now on, it's Dr. Erengard. <laughs> Not Dr. Feenster anymore around the house. Uh, but in terms of Patrick, I, I honestly don't have any, um, I don't have enough good things to say about Patrick. This isn't funny. <laughs> he is, a, a warm, kind, caring, and thoughtful father, and he's now the husband to my sister. Um, and Patrick, to you directly, there are two very important necessities to a truly happy and meaningful existence. Those two necessities are a joyful heart and a purpose for your soul to find fulfillment in. I can see evidently in Jennifer's eyes that you have given her both of those things. And for that, I both admire you and I am truly grateful. And Jennifer, I love you with all my heart and I'm very, very proud of you for all you've accomplished and the inevitability of your future success. Even though you and I live thousands of miles apart, kilometers, <laughs> I, I continue to feel that sibling bond with you no matter the time or the distance. And it just, it, it makes me, it makes my heart feel warm that we can share that closeness with so many miles apart. Um, all my life, I've had two sisters. I've never had a brother. But now, after tonight, I am so overjoyed to welcome a Viking <laughs> into my family. <laughs> so, let me grab my beer. Everyone, if you can please grab your drink, raise your glasses, and salute my beautiful sister and my new Viking brother. <laughs> Jen and Patrick, I wish you both all of my blessings and joy and happiness in your newly forged union. I love you both.
nu först vill jag börja och hälsa dig Jenny för välkommen till våran familj och hoppas att, det kommer, att du kommer att smälta in i ledet. Eh, jag vet vi, vi var ju där jag och farmor och, och barnvakt när när eh, vad heter den lilla nu det är ju alltså Lea och var på gång och då, då fick vi ta hand om den stora killen och nu, det vi umgick ju lite en hel del och det fungerar bra det var ju en parentes att det var efter i kyrkoppet försvann det får jag ta på mitt konto nu får jag översätta sen då ja och till dig då Patrik vad har vi att säga det, du har ju varit med i början jag vet när du var liten du var, det skulle ju hända saker du var lite sådär otörlig jag vet, hemma, vi satt hemma och, och inte hade något för oss och, och, och då kanske vi kunde komma på att vi inte spelade till kort men innan vi resten hade bestämt vad vi skulle spela så har du Patrik gått upp på sitt rum alltså det, det, fick, det fick inte ta för länge för då var det över och sen har ju du sysslat med lite ute vart du har du har ju varit på en betongfabrik och grejat och sen har du hjälpt oss hemma och spikat pall i en ballage och, och ja och du var det och sen började du då studera och det har du haft, har du nytta av nu då och sen ja sen började du att jobba på jag vet inte du har varit på många ställen men på Järntöjet det var ju du hade på det då sen blir ju det lite trädligt och ointressant så, så då ville du vidare och då kom du på att du skulle eh, ja du, du köpte ju den tömt då och, ja, och byggde och, och, och sen eh, kom du på att du skulle vidare i Järntöjet och, och då, då kom du på att du sätta på något eget så då började du med det ihop med Johan här eh, en egen firma och, och den som Niklas sa att det går ju, det går ju strålande bara, bara i kan få fram cement, cementen inte tar slut ja och det säger han ofta när vi sitter hemma och går och igenom problemen att ja det skickar jag Johan på ja så är det Eh, och, men det viktigaste utav allt tror jag nu att du tycker själv att, att du har fått en familj det, det tror jag ja så jag tycker att vi ställer oss upp och utbringar ett fyrfärdigt leve för brukaret hip hip hurra. det lever hurra 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 och så en skål på det So I'm Laura, the bridesmaid. Um, I haven't prepared anything because I hate public speaking. I suck at it. Sorry for the bad word. Um, but I couldn't live here without saying how important Jennifer has been for my life. So I met her in 2012 when I moved to New York. I had just freshly landed there and I knew nobody. And I arrived to the lab and there was this girl uh, sitting there in the, living, in the sitting room reading a fantasy book. She couldn't care less about my arrival. But it was a fantasy book, so I knew that that was a good starting point. So I told her to go out for lunch a couple of times. She said no the first two or three times, but eventually it worked. And uh, the rest was history. Like we, we just jammed New York. We just did everything. We went to every parade, we went to every, swing party, we went to every concert, we went to everything. It was like the best two years I could have in New York, all thanks to her. So when it was her time to go, to go and uh, the option came for her to leave to Sweden, it was bittersweet because I knew I was going to lose her. But for me, it was like such a huge opportunity for her. It was such a big step that I just pushed her against my heart 
to go, and I'm so happy that I did, because <laughs> it was just a year later that she told me, ooh, I've met somebody. <laughs> After having lots of parties, she had met somebody. So when before uh, you were talking about how, uh, sorry, I just blacked out. Um, how Patrick was telling you about his impressions when he was meeting Jennifer, I was on the other side of these conversations. I was getting Jennifer's messages about, this guy is a bit too fast. <laughs> He's like, he really wants to come see my parents. What? <laughs> so you first came to New York. You did a stopover. So we were all ready to like, not like him. Like, this guy is too fast, right? And I'm on Jennifer's team. But he arrived, and like three minutes later, both Philippe and I were just head over feet on the floor, <laughs> loving him, <laughs> like laughing at his jokes, and like completely sold. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was great. It was great. It was surprisingly great. <laughs> so we are really, really, really happy to be here today. Also, I mean, for those of you who don't know, Jennifer was witness to our wedding. We got married in New York in 2013 in City Hall. There were two people attending. Jennifer was one of them. <laughs> and uh, it just, it's very special for me to be here, to be sitting beside her on that day and on this day. And uh, I just feel like a full circle that we are here today. And thank you so much for being my friend throughout. We've been in many places together and I hope that this continues for the rest of our lives. Thank you.